Hello and welcome to a video series I'm putting together on effective online learning. Um, as a result of COVID and the pandemic, I've been uh, asked to do a lot of talks and workshops and things like that on online learning, what the research has to say about it. So I have uh, pulled those materials together, those various talks, and I'm putting those uh, into a series of different uh, recorded talks. Uh, based based on the questions that I'm receiving out in the field and what the research has to say to all of the questions that everybody's raising. Um, my name is Stephanie Moore. I'm presently at the University of New Mexico. I'm assistant professor in the Organization Information and Learning Sciences program out there. I have spent um, over 20 years teaching online, building online programs, uh, and my PhD is in educational technology uh, with specialty in the area of uh, online learning, as well as, as niche areas like accessibility and ethics of online. So uh, so let's get into it. I This talk uh, right uh, for today is on effective online learning. What are some insights of what makes for effective online learning? Um, and I, here I'm gonna draw really from research practice and students, uh, you know, student feedback uh, on the classes and programs that uh, I've helped build over time, I think uh, help highlight that uh, what we talk about from research and practice really does translate to great outcomes in the online learning classroom. So <clears throat> a little bit about my own background, just real quick, I've taught graduate and undergraduate classes online. And I've also taught or supported across many different subject matters. Um, um, you know, prior to being a professor, I was an instructional designer or director of instructional design, you know, various hats, um, and really worked with folks across a range of different subject matters. And I think that helps me, you know, have a certain perspective that, you know, what strategies work over here may not necessarily be the same strategies. And so here's how you might wanna go about doing X or Y. And uh, you'll see that in later videos on like assessment methods, um, assessment methods that you use say in you know education classes or humanities might be, be very different from how you assess in engineering or you know in labs or practicals or things like that. Um, I have led three different efforts uh, or been part, I should say really been part of a leadership team uh, to develop three fully online programs. Uh, one of those won the AACT Innovation of the Year Award. Another one, a regional award from uh, Southern Piedmont uh, here in Virginia. And then um, uh, the latest program that I helped develop is presently ranked number three in US News and World Report. So <laughs> um, in terms of research and service, uh, I, my faculty uh, thinking is coming out here. I do lots of workshops and classes, also support student research and development and have numerous publications on online, including using online and simulations like for cultural competency. Um, and accessibility and online. So I like kind of the niche areas that may not be the common things everybody's talking about. Um, some of the recent articles responding to COVID, I've uh, got some links here to those articles. Uh, wrote one with uh, Chuck Hodges uh, in Inside Higher Ed on practical advice for instructors moving to online teaching quickly. So if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're having to pull things together very quickly, we tried to distill a lot of these tips down here. Um, we also authored, along with some other colleagues, a piece on the difference between emergency remote teaching and online. Um, I think there's a significant qualitative difference between the nature of instruction that we're seeing through online tools right now uh, as a result of the pandemic versus typical online learning, um, and which is uh, more often very carefully constructed and whatnot. So we talk about that in that piece. And, and then uh, Phil Hill and I wrote this piece together on planning for resilience, not resistance. Um, you know, how can you really think about online, not so much online versus face-to-face, -face, um, which honestly the research just doesn't even support that sort of perspective, but instead thinking about our educational systems as ecosystems 
and how on campus, online learning, blended learning, you know, these are all part of more of a rich tapestry of a rich ecosystem. And by thinking about things that way, we can really build more resilient institutions and educational systems.